today on the CTV News at 5. It has been frustrating. Why four years after a devastating fire, there are no signs of rebuilding the Kilmory Lodge in Waterton. Plus, remembering Ralph, a celebration of his life is set. And April Fool's Day. I, I, I drive a tractor trailer. I've got 18 gears to grab. A look at some of the pranks that were pulled. CTV News with Jackie Scandlebury. Good afternoon. It's been over four years since fire destroyed the Kilmory Lodge in Waterton. But despite plans to rebuild, the site remains vacant. Both the developer and Parks say that it would like to see the project go ahead, but the property owner says red tape and changing Parks Canada staff have been to blame for the delay. Terry Vote reports. Old Kilmory, I miss it. Lockie Craig represents a business group that wants to rebuild the Kilmory Lodge in Waterton Park. But more than four years after the old hotel burned down, the site remains vacant. It has been frustrating. Craig says Parks Canada has always been well-meaning, but a string of unfortunate circumstances, including retirements, job transfers and funding cuts, have contributed to delays. We do not have a proposal for the, uh, for the Kilmory on the table. Parks Canada says it's serious and very interested in seeing the Kilmory rebuilt. But the park superintendent says the project needs to fit within the Waterton community plan. The intent there is to maintain the, this, the, the, ex, the experience for visitors that, 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 that they're used to when they come to Waterton. Small town sort of feeling, so low scale buildings. The developers say it was their understanding the community plan was going to be revised in 2012, in part with the Kilmory project in mind, but that never happened. I recently found out that, in fact, they're not going to be doing the community plan or redoing the community plan, which is surprising to me and surprising to a number of the other stakeholders in Waterton. There are some obstacles. The builder is responsible for providing appropriate parking and staff accommodation, but park officials say that shouldn't prevent the project from going ahead. But I don't think they're, they're major stumbling blocks. They're just challenges, and then and we're going to work with the developer to, to come out to, to figure out solutions there, definitely. The developer is also hoping to make progress soon. They're now working under a new deadline to start construction in early 2014. Terry Vogt, CTV News, Lethbridge. All of the developers say the approvals have to be complete by next spring, and they say because of snow in the short summer season in Waterton, builders are under a very tight schedule when it comes to construction in the park. They say missing the window could cause even more delays. Okay, Dory Rossiter, I don't know about you, but I am so glad that April Fool's Day technically ends at noon. I was taken twice by our own people, one of them being you, because of that weather forecast you put on our CTV Lethbridge Facebook page. The second time was about you by Daryl Rummeld when he tweeted that you were retiring. Yeah. And I fell hook, line and sinker, which is not I, happening, correct? I know, apparent, apparently you called him back right away to check to see. I thought that was really funny, but no, they'll have to drag me out of here kicking and screaming, quite frankly. <laughs> so it's not, it's not happening. I'm having way too much fun with the forecast, which is really good for today and tomorrow. And then the shoe drops, and I'll tell you all about it in a couple of minutes. Okay, well, despite that, Dory, we will very happily keep you around kicking and screaming. Southern Albertans will be able to sign books of condolence for Ralph Klein's family starting tomorrow. A memorial service for the former Alberta Premier will be held later this week. The City of Calgary says a public celebration of life will be held at noon Friday at the Jack Singer Concert Hall. Officials say in addition to invited guests, there will be seating available to the general public. We will have streaming live coverage of the memorial beginning at 11.30 Friday morning here on CTV. Books of condolence will be available to sign at provincial buildings in Lethbridge, Medicine Hat, Red Deer, Grand Prairie and Fort McMurray starting tomorrow until April 12th. Books are already being signed in Calgary and Edmonton. You can also sign an online book of condolence on the Alberta government website. Klein died on Friday at the age of 70. Well, it was brought into a lot of controversy and now it's on its way out. British Columbia is dumping the harmonized sales tax. The province is returning to the 7% provincial sales tax alone. Meanwhile, the opposite is true in PEI where the harmonized sales tax kicks in today. 
to municipal politics and how you can give your input on the city's upcoming capital budget plans. Tomorrow night from 6 until 8, there will be an open house at City Hall where you can get a look at the capital projects that are being proposed and then speak with City Council and administration. A presentation is being made at 7 regarding the available funding. A public meeting is also being held April the 15th where you can tell Council what your priorities are. However, you do have to contact the City Clerk's Office to be put on the agenda. Submissions are also being accepted online on the city's website. Well, police are warning the public to think twice and do your research. If you get a check in the mail that you weren't expecting, they say scammers are turning from email to snail mail to catch their victims. Jeanette Roche has more. Well, it came with a check for this amount. It's not every day you get a big check in the mail you didn't expect. But that's exactly what happened to Sharon Megacy. Well, it told me to deposit a check to the bank. That check was made out to Megacy in the amount of $3,900. A letter explained she'd been selected to be a secret shopper at several large retail outlets and instructed her to deposit the check into her bank account, then transfer 3,200 of it to other mystery shoppers in New York and Mexico and keep the remainder for herself. When it came, there was no return address and, um, well, the stamp was on the back, which is unusual. Despite warnings in her head that this might be a scam, she went ahead and followed the instructions, but stopped short of transferring the money to another account. A lot of times victims kind of get that sixth sense feeling that something isn't right, um, but these fraudsters are really good and put urgency or pressure people to make decisions in a short period of time. Police say it's not uncommon for Lethbridge residents to fall victims to these type of scams, and to combat the problem, they've launched a number of public awareness campaigns to educate people on how to protect themselves. You've worked hard and long for your money before you start to invest in something. Make sure you do a lot of research. And at the end of the day, once again, like our theme, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. In Megacy's case, she was smart enough to note the discrepancies in the letter, even though the company sounded legit. She now considers the whole thing a learning experience and hopes to help others view their mail with a more critical eye. Beware, I think. Just really beware of things that you have not solicited things that come in the mail that are out of the blue. Jeanette Roche, CTV News, Lathbridge. About a week after depositing that check, the money was reversed from Megacy's account with a note from her bank marked scam. A local radio station had listeners up in arms this morning after announcing the province's plan to introduce a bylaw prohibiting drivers from taking their hands off the 10 and 2 on the steering wheel at any time. What happens to the guy who's got a standard vehicle? I, I, I drive a tractor trailer. I got eight some gears to grab. I got buttons, jake switches, everything else. I got to have my hands on everything. And now they're going to tell me I got to put two on the wheel? That won't work. Yeah, I hear they're actually getting. It was, of course, cars. an they April should. Fool's yeah, joke played by else, DJs Vince and Rosie over at Rock 106. Our Joe Rummeld and Police Constable Blaine Stadolka played a small role in their elaborate ruse, making it sound even more credible. Listeners jammed the phone lines upset over the bylaw, especially those who drove standard vehicles or big rig trucks. Vince considers it a job well done. Results were miraculous. Tell me about the reaction of the people. Oh, they hate us. They're mad. Yeah, very, very disappointed. Uh, a lot of people wondering, what are you going to do if you drive stick? To which I said, well, they're actually going to abolish stick drivers like they're getting rid of the standard cars it's a successful prank absolutely yeah it worked off really well good oh now coming up we're going to tell you about some of the other big practical jokes that happened around the world today Families turned out in record numbers to take advantage of the spring conditions to celebrate the Easter long weekend at the Galt Museum The Easter Bunny made a visit to the Galt during the Extravaganza, an event featuring games, arts and crafts, as well as face painting. Kids frantically searched for Easter eggs at the Westminster Community Centre as well. It's a free event for children seven and under. They searched the field and playground in search of chocolate treats and prizes. Organizers say they had to restock their Easter chocolate three times during the event, much to the delight of the kids. What's your favorite part about Easter? Um, I don't know the candy. Uh, chocolate. Are you looking for eggs? No eggs today. You didn't get any eggs? 
Was there just too many kids? Tell me, tell me about how many kids there were today. Lots. Chances are I will talk like this because I only have teeth on the border. And on the cotton trail, the hunt was on for the real-life Easter bunny, the cotton-tail rabbit at the Helen Schuler Nature Center. The educational walk proved young families with the opportunity to find just what makes bunnies so unique. The cotton-tail rabbit is a common species in southern Alberta's river valleys and coolies, but it's also common in pop culture as well. People have quite a fascination with rabbits, not just the Easter Bunny, um, but you know, like there's Bugs Bunny, and I'm sure most people uh, remember, you know, the Trix uh, cereal. You know, hey, Trix is for kids, always uh, trying to steal the cereal, and so people have a real fascination with uh, with rabbits. And here's one more funny story. It seems everyone, even the Easter Bunny, has to obey the rules of the road. The Easter Bunny got pulled over by the California Highway Patrol on Saturday. Or at least someone dressed like him. Police say he wasn't wearing a helmet while riding a motorcycle on a San Diego area highway. The bunny, pretending to cry, said he was on his way to a charity event for Easter. He scampered away with a warning and no ticket, but the officer told him to always wear a helmet. And hopping on to the financial front now, where underwhelming manufacturing numbers out of the U.S. pushed American markets down. On the way next, Dory's going to tell us about the fluctuating forecast.